We've just had a huge news drop for Phase 3 of Season of Discovery, including a new PvE event, a new raid, rune previews and much more. In this video I'm going to be breaking down all the news in advance of Phase 3's release on April 4th. So now's the time to gear out your main, finish up that alt and get ready for the next phase of the season. Speaking of alts, I wanted to start with a quick mention to XP bonuses and buffs. The 100% XP buff will still persist within the level 1 to 39 bracket, so that characters have a fast way to get up to speed with the current content. In addition to that, the Nomragun raid will start being treated as a level up raid and will grant a bunch of XP, similar to how BFD did at the start of phase 2. The world buff from BFD will still work up to level 39 and the Noma buff will work up to level 49. Blizzard also made an announcement regarding preparing for future phases saying that pre-questing is generally fine up to a point, however gathering hundreds or even thousands of items to take advantage of repeatable turn-ins is not. So marks of honor, waste wonder water pouches, troll necklaces won't work to quickly level up. They didn't mention whether the student fodder from the sleeping bag quest was going to work or not, but if you still have them in your bank, maybe they do end up working. We'll find out soon enough. For the 40 to 50 journey, there will be a plus 50% experience buff in the game right from the get go. This should smooth out the levels and ensure you don't run out of quests when getting your main on this penultimate step to 60. There will also be a brand new open world PvE focused event called Nightmare Incursions. These take place at the portals where the Green Dragon World bosses usually are, so Ashenvale, Duskward, Feralus and the Hinterlands. Venturing into an incursion will have you fighting against corrupted nightmare creatures, ranging from the soul orbal to ones needing a group. Blizzard also mentioned that this is intended to be a tool that can be in part used to level up between 25 and 50. Perhaps there'll be different instances for different level brackets or something, otherwise the higher levels are going to blast the content and the low levels, well, just won't be able to do it. Participating in an incursion awards reputation with a new faction, the Emerald Wardens, who have a variety of rewards on offer, a few of which were shown during the presentation, such as a kit to make leveling a bit easier on alts, an epic ring with a big spell damage proc, and a level 50 PvP set that will be available at Honored. I do wonder if they'll put runes behind this as well. Maybe not though. This PvP set is intended to get you some easy starter PvP gear for the 50 bracket, and probably is just there to increase your health pool because so far in Season of Discovery, PvP has been very bursty. One more thing about these incursions and the Emerald Wardens is that it sets up a new reputation surrounding the Green Dragon World bosses in general, and they're going to be added into the game, presumably presumably around the same time as ZG is. This will be a space to watch in the future for sure. Next up is something I know I would have liked to have seen in Phase 2, but now it's confirmed to be coming in Phase 3, so healers, PvPers and, well, just about everyone rejoice because Jewel Spec is coming to Season of Discovery. Or is it just Jewel Spec? Agren does mention during the presentation that the NPC that teaches Jewel Spec has two sets of special talents to share. Are we getting getting tri-spec where you can just pick between each one maybe. I mean that sounds good to me if we are. I've been at least in favour of dual spec in Season of Discovery for a while now. I think it fits with the theme of trying new things out. It also shows on the NPC who sells dual spec or tri-spec or whatever it is we end up getting that it will cost 50 gold and require level 40. This seems as though it's a fine small gold sink in Season of Discovery. 50 gold is what the respec costs capped out as in Classic originally, so to pay that one time to respec spec as much as you want is going to be pretty amazing. Next up is the new raid for the phase, and rather unsurprisingly, it is the Sunken Temple. This dungeon has been reimagined as an 8 boss raid that will feature both reworked bosses of old, as well as totally new additions to the game. Aranicus will of course feature as the iconic last boss of the raid. I can see the chained essence of Aranicus becoming part of a quest line for the epic turn in 2. This raid will have hundreds of both reworked and new items to gather, similar to every raid this season so far. 
The tier token system from Nomorgan will be making a return, however similar to future expansions it's now been split into two different tokens that encompass different classes. The one they showed is for Warrior, Paladin, Hunter, Rogue and Shaman, so I'm inferring the other one will be for Mage, Warlock, Priest and Druid. The Sunken Temple is confirmed to be a 20 player raid, so now's the time to start bolstering up your guild in preparation for this larger size. It will also be on a one week lockout instead of the three days we have experienced so far in Season of Discovery, and Blizzard also say they're going to be very generous with loot to make up for this. Sunken Temple will also be open from the moment the phase releases with no caveats, so the people racing for World First can just go for it straight away. Sunken Temple will also bring class quests into the game as well as their respective rewards, and it sounded as though quite a few of them were going to be updated too from the presentation. Speaking of updated itemization, Blizzard did confirm that a ton of dungeon quests and dungeon loot has been updated to make them more interesting choices to go and farm, including items from Zulfarak, Maradon and more. I'm hoping this feels more like Phase 1 where there was tons of Prebis stuff from dungeons and they felt very worth doing, as opposed to Phase 2 where you either had BFD gear which was a bit too good, or you kind of just got everything from the dungeons in not much time at all. Professions will also be receiving a bunch of updates in Phase 3 too. First up you'll be able to level all the way to 300. This will mean there's a bunch of existing stuff in the game we won't be able to wear, but maybe it'll be worth making to disenchant though. Profession special specializations will be available too, and I'd check online what your profession needs to actually learn the spec, as in vanilla you don't just walk up to an NPC and they give you your specialization. They did mention new profession specs too, such as potion, elixir and flask mastery for alchemy, and I'm expecting enchanting to get a specialization too. And just in case you're wondering, we can use flasks at level 50, but in order to craft them you need to get into Scholomance, and the quest to get the key needs level 55 to start, and rogues can't lockpick the door either because you'll need 280 skill, which means you've got to be level 56. Also, you know, flask recipes drop from bosses such as General Drakisath in UBRS, which might be a bit tricky to do at level 50. So there won't be any flasks of this phase, but you'll be able to start gathering Black Lotus for now next phase. There will of course be a new set of epic items from all the crafting professions too, and Blizzard confirmed the gold cost of this will be low, and that all existing profession items from Ziri, that's the gnome that sells all the stuff in Noma, would also be lowered. They do think gold sinks are important, but basically want to make them a bit more optional, rather than required for your bigger stock grades. For PvP there will be a new 6 piece set requiring ranks 5 to 7. This will be what you'll aim to get eventually as a PvPer as an upgrade to the Emerald Warden set. Also I'm just going to throw this in the video here but the amount of stats we have compared to how much food and water restores at our levels is starting to become a pretty big gap and it's only getting wider. I know there's meant to be downtime in vanilla and stuff but it might be worth putting some new general health or mana restoring items in the game somewhere just to account for our power growth. The STV PvP event will be seeing updates too. Bloodstained Commendations will be retired, that's the item that gives you 250 honour for 25 copper coins, and they will also be removed in game after a two week real world duration, so as long as you turn them in at some point after the patch you'll be fine. This means if you have a bunch of coins now and you'd rather use them for ranking from 5 to 7 faster as opposed to grinding a Rathi Basin rep, that should be an option. There will be a new coin for new rewards too, a few of which were shown, such as an updated two-handed enhancement shaman weapon, a paladin Libram, a utility throne weapon, and an actual proper ranged hunter weapon this phase. Next we have our runes, so Blizzard took lessons from phase 2 and have ensured that you get more of your new runes at an earlier stage in phase 3, though there will still be some runes which are more geared towards the end game content. There will be 6 new runes per class, and the new engraving slots will be your helm and braces. They showed 2 runes that each class will be getting in phase 3 as well, and I'm going to be getting through these pretty quick here as we've got a bunch more to cover. Druids get Gore which allows special attacks in bear form to have a chance to reset Mangle, and special attacks in Cat to reset Tiger's Fury. Improved Bark Skin removes its downsides and allows it to be casted while in form and on allies. Hunters lock and load makes your next shot free and costs no mana after a trap is triggered. This should be able to be propped back to back with Frost and Fire Traps for all in all 3 explosive or chimera shots in a row. Sounds pretty good to me. Focus Fire 
consumes a pet's frenzy stacks for attack speed, pretty similar to the Kata version this. Mages get Deep Freeze, and this is interesting in both PvP and PvE because it's a rune, not an end of talent tree ability. Shattering this on stun immune targets does do a lot of damage. You also get Balefire Bolt, which causes Spellfire damage. Each cast increases its damage by 10%, but reduces your spirit by 10%. And if your spirit hits zero, you die. You never go full Balefire. Paladin, Improved Sanctuary increases the damage blocked by Blessing of Sanctuary by 100%, and increases the damage of this ability by 30% of your shield block value. Seems just good for boosting and gold farming, to be honest. Paladins also get Wrath, so Consecration takes King Crit, and Offensive Spells gain Crit equal to your melee crit chance. For Priest, Pain and Suffering makes Mindflay refresh Shadowware Pain back to its maximum duration. I'm pretty sure Mindflay just kind of doesn't exist as a spell because Mind Spike's a thing. Surge of Light makes your Smite Priest memes into a reality, causing spell crits to make either Flash Heal or Smite Instant. Rogue gets Honor Among Thieves, and a very overpowered version of it at that, essentially giving you one combo point per second as long as somebody is critting with a one second internal cooldown. Now, finally rogues can expose and not be able to complain about it. Okay, but for real though, this is very strong. Just make sure you're putting yourself in a party with people who are going to be critting a lot. Cut to the chase makes Inviscerate or Envenom refresh either Blade Dance or Slice and Dice to their maximum duration, whichever one has a less time left. Season of Shaman continues with Mental Dexterity. Dealing melee damage increases attack power by 100% of your intellect and your spell power and healing by 30% of total attack power for one minute. This this isn't just an enhancement rune either. LA and Resto can pop on two Rockbiter weapons with dual wield alongside a loyal beta, go hit something once, swap back to your normal weapons, and you've just gained an absolutely dumb amount of spell power. Shamans are not going to dodge the nerf bat on this one for long, I'm telling you. Resto shamans will be very happy to see Riptide make a return, giving you a powerful on the move instant heal. It also always procs Ancestral Awakening for some extra throughput. Warlocks get Pandemic, so Dots can now crit. This would pair up very well with Honor Among Thieves for a rogue. Perhaps we will see some Affliction gameplay in PvE this phase as well. Well, maybe. Fire is probably still going to be too good. Also, we get Felguard, a powerful new summon, and I assume the go-to demon now. Also, they mentioned this is not the only new demon this phase. They could be referring to the Infernal class quest, though. Last but not least, our Warriors. Taste for Blood makes it so Rend causes overpower to proc once per 6 seconds. Rend is still kind of a meme. It would have been good if this just procced from any bleeds, because Warriors are going to want to run deep wounds. Sword and Board makes Revenge and Devastate have a chance to reset the cooldown on shield slam as well as making it free for five seconds i don't know if this is enough to make you want to play deep prot again we'll see warrior got a bonus rune revealed too the legendary gladiator stance is making a return for season of discovery it increases damage and block chance by 10 percent when wearing a shield but reduces armor by 30 percent and threat generated by 10 percent the interesting bit is whilst in this stance you can use all abilities that are stance restricted honestly first impressions this seems like a pvp utility stance more than anything else and it's missing some key ability modifiers which it had back in warlords of draenor which made it you know deal damage. The last part of the update they gave us is a level 60 preview. This is all work in progress and subject to change, but they wanted to give us some impressions on phase 4 of the game. Blizzard intend to keep reworking dungeon loot to make it interesting, as well as providing updates to professions so they give valuable upgrades you can consider on your way to assembling your BIS. Alongside itemization updates, they aim to overhaul tier 1, 2 and 3 so that these sets and their bonuses now fit more class archetypes as well as entirely new class archetypes that exist within the season. They showed some tier 1 reworks here. A tanking rogue set with a focus on giving magical mitigation and energy, a wholly damage dealing paladin set, and a boomkin set that aims to buff your core spells. All future raids will be on a one-week lockout too, just to prevent confusion with differing raid lockouts. This includes Anixia's Lair, Zulgarub, and AQ20. Blizzard confirmed priests will eventually be able to unlock other priest racial abilities, so an undead priest with dwarf racials for PvP, or a shadow priest with devouring plague in PvE. Both of these combos and much more will eventually be possible. And we will also find a way to learn how to get plus 5 to 2 different weapon skills. 
However, this will not stack with existing weapon skill ratios, and you can't pick the same one twice. They said really early on in this season that you should pick your race based on preference, not because of the weapon skill they have, because it's seen as mandatory. And right now, my Dwarf Paladin and Troll Shaman are very happy about that. Again, we won't see this till level 60 though, but that's when plus weapon skill really begins to matter, as I'm assuming bosses will return to having a hidden level of plus 3, rather than the plus two we've had so far. And that is it, everything they've gone over in the big presentation for phase three of Season of Discovery. A lot of information, a lot of stuff to look forward to for both PvPers and PvEers, plenty of new content and lessons taken from how phase two went. And this is all coming out very soon on April 4th. So let me know your thoughts on the patch and everything I've gone over today. And was there anything which I missed off, which you think is worth a mention? do drop it down in the comments down below. And, as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.